Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace, and today we are back in P5JS. I'm going to be showing you some projects I've been working on. This was what I showed last time. I'll change one of the variables. This draws very slowly, and since I posted this video, I found Dan Schiffman uh, made a mathematical rose pattern, and the way he did it, this was drawn basically instantly. So I used his methods and now I can draw my patterns instantly and change them with the sliders. Uh, so I'm going to show you this a little bit more in detail. And then I also, uh, later on in the video, I want to take this and improve it uh, and make a, an automatic pattern maker so that these basically these sliders are automated um, randomly going up and down and uh, so that basically here's my uh, pattern maker that I also showed off in my last video so I want the this has the colors being uh, changed gradually so my idea is that this uh, would change and be layered on top of each other with the colors changing and I think that would be interesting so what is different about this code compared to this code over here. The difference is there's this begin shape and an end shape with a vertex and a for loop. And those together basically connect the dots. And it, I think what it's doing is it's calculating where all the pixels need to go ahead of time and then connecting those dots and then drawing the whole thing at the end. I think that's what's happening. And so it's doing that a lot faster than if I drew one pixel at a time. Although I don't understand why it's like 10,000 times faster. Uh, maybe somebody in the comments can explain to me why this is so much faster than the other method I was using. Another difference between this and this, uh, I had my lovely Steve's curve, type 3, which could produce something like this. And unfortunately, my Steve's curve over here, if I use that one, um, I just get this slinky shape. And I don't understand why it's different when I'm using this begin shape, end shape with the vertex stuff. Uh, it just does a sl slinky and I can't get this shape. At least I don't think I can. Let me try these exact coordinates. Uh, four. 1.2, 5.2. If I start my slider, this is the starting value. So I do 4, 1.2, 5.2, and I'll do number 3. Aha! I can get my shape. It looks like most of the time, though, I'm just getting a slinky. But just every now and then I get something interesting. All right. Yeah, this is actually not so bad. Ooh, that was nice. I kind of wonder if it's just um, because I've stopped. I'm only doing 10,000 pixels. And maybe if I was doing this with 20,000 pixels, it might continue drawing and maybe make a more complicated shape, I guess. Let's try switching this to 20,000. Aha. So it was just because I hadn't drawn enough. How does it perform with 20,000? Is it still, well, it's still going quite quickly. So if I were to just do say 5,000, so I'm getting some more interesting shapes just because it's not drawing as many uh, pixels. But you know, it, it actually kind of is interesting to only have say a thousand you only get part of it drawn, but that's kind of interesting too. So here is uh, the hypertrochoid. Now, how many do I have? I only have 5,000 being drawn, but it's just because it's not fully drawn. You can see it's stopping right here. Okay, I think that's enough playing around with it. Let's actually try to make this into something, um, the pattern maker thing I wanted to show you. The first thing I'm going to do is duplicate this. 
file, duplicate, and now I want to simplify this. I'm going to do just a type 1, so I'm going to get rid of all the epitrochoid and the Steve's curve. Um, I'm also going to say that the step up rate is always 1, so I'll get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of all the sliders. Okay, I've done that, and my code is a lot shorter now, and you can see it's still able to draw a shape, though it's static now. If I wanted to change it, I could change it up here, like so. So let's see if we can get one of these values to change over time. So um, I think maybe here, if I say A equals A plus 0.1, maybe? There we go. Very good. Maybe even a smaller increments. Ooh, that is really fast. Even smaller? That's better. Okay, so let's randomize this. Uh, A equals A plus random negative 0 0.001 and positive 0 0.001. And let's see what that does. Oh, that's quite random. And let's also change B the same, and we'll change C as well. So we'll do B, B, C, C. Okay. It's not very smooth. It's rather jittery. Let me try switching this to 0 0.01 and maybe I should make this a variable uh, what do I want to call this change something like that so we'll say let change equal 0 0.01 okay that's really fast back to this it's not giving me as much variation as I had hoped not sure what to do about that let's work on the colors next the color is the stroke here, it's 255. I want to make that an RGB and maybe an alpha as well. Alpha is kind of transparency. So let's go up to the top and we'll add some variables. Let R equal, let's start in the middle, let R equal 125, let B equal 125, let G equal 125. And then let alpha, actually we'll hard code alpha in. And down here, so we'll do red equals red plus random uh, negative five comma positive five. And then the same with uh, red, green, blue. So we got G and blue. And then we'll change our stroke weight to R, G, B, and then we'll give it, for now, we'll give it alpha of 255. Let's see what that does. Oh, identifier B has already been declared. Okay. Oh, because I've, I'm already using B uh, for this. So let me change this to BL maybe, and change that there. Let's see if that works. There we go, and now the color is changing very gradually, but it is. Now what if, I'm giving it a background each time I do the draw, so if I just take the background out or move it, let's take it out of here and put it up into the setup section. There we go. All right, we're getting somewhere. It doesn't look great. Let's change the colors more dramatically, and let's change the variables of the spirograph more dramatically also. Boy, that is not what I expected. Okay, uh, let's try giving it some alpha. Um, maybe, I don't know, this might actually make it worse. If I do 50 here instead. Boy, this is not working out the way I hoped it would. <laughs> what if the A was going up by more? and the B was going down by more, what would that do? Oh, okay. 
That's sort of interesting. I think it's way out though. Uh, let me try point two. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. Maybe I need to cycle through the entire range of values. So I want to go A between 1.5 and 20, and B between 1.5 and 20, and C between 1 and 20. And these are just values that I came up with by experimenting some. So let's add some if statements in here. If A is greater than uh, 20, then let's say A equals 1.5. So it'll be wrapped around to the beginning. And then if B is less than 1.5, then B equals uh, 20. So it wraps around the other way. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Let's change that to 0.3 and 0.3. Yeah. Okay. Let's make sure the colors are wrapping around as well. If R greater than 256, then R equals 0. G greater than 256, then G equals 0. BL greater than 256, then BL equals zero, and let's increment R, G, and B, and we'll have this go up, each of them go up a little bit more. Alrighty. Maybe we actually want this to go up, say, by 11, and this one to go up by 12, and that one to go up by 13. All right, we're getting a little bit more variation in color. I need to zoom it out more. Uh, let me change this to 0.3. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Zoom it out further. That's not too bad. It's not really pretty, though. <laughs> Hey, I uh, crashed my browser and I had to redo my work because I hadn't saved. But uh, I got it back to what it sort of was before. It's still kind of bad. Okay, I increased the random change in the colors. And what else did I do? I put some alpha in uh, so that there's some transparency. Let's see that. And that's a little bit better. Now it's still, uh, it's disappearing at some point. What is happening is it's suddenly getting really big uh, to where you can't see it because it's outside the field of view. And uh, here it comes, it's coming back in. Um, I'm gonna have to deal with that somehow. So down here I've got the X and the Y and the X's are going to be uh, kind of going like this through this one particular drawing it's doing. I want to calculate the maximum off to the side for that particular drawing. And if that maximum is going off of the screen, then I want to zoom out. I had to pause the video for a little while because I was really having trouble figuring out this zoom issue, but I figured it out. So let max equal zero, and then if x is greater than max, then max equals x. So what this is doing is seeing how far out uh, x goes, what's the maximum x for this particular drawing, and then that becomes max. Then at the very end, after I've drawn the shape, then zoom equals 220 divided by max, and 220 is just uh, half the width of the window minus uh, 30. So then the next drawing I do for the vertex, I'm multiplying by this zoom figure. So you can see that that is working. And it looks pretty nice. I want to see if I can get it to look a little bit nicer. 
Also, I forgot to mention, I added a pause button. So I can click here and it pauses and we can see how lovely that is. Uh, the pause button is just function mouse pressed P equals P times negative one. So uh, after the draw starts, this entire draw is in an if statement. It says if P is greater than zero, then do all of this stuff. And if it's not greater than zero, then don't do it. P starts out as one. So if I click here, then this is P times negative one. So the P goes from positive one to negative one when I click. And then if I click again, it goes from negative one to positive one. So that's telling it whether to do all of these, this stuff in here or not. What I might try is, um, change the pixels. I've got the pixel size at 2. I wanted to see what would happen if I changed that to maybe 10. Would that be better? Well, that's pretty interesting. Let's let it go again. I'm not sure about that. It's, it's not too bad. Let me make it 1. See what that looks like. That looks really nice. I like that. I don't like when it gets way out here, but I don't know what to do about that. Yeah, this is looking nice. Let me see um, if I draw less, if it's not as um, finished, would that be, what would, what would that do? That's pretty interesting. I like that. Wow, okay. We might have a winner here. Um, anything else I could do? Let me look at my alpha. I got a stroke weight of 50. Let me try putting it way up to 250 and see what that looks like. I think I like it better with a low alpha. Let's try something like a 100. That's pretty nice right there. All right, I this is I'm digging this. Maybe this is it. I think we're done. Okay, not quite done. I couldn't help but tinker with it some more. And now uh Oh, it's it's so amazing. So I've added the epitrochoid back in so we can switch to the epitrochoid i've got the stroke weight here you can mess with uh i've got the alpha you can mess with so we can make this uh 250 if we want uh so this is kind of hard to look at i know but you can pause it and sometimes you get lucky and you get something spectacular like that's pretty cool the other thing i added an offset which is well I'll just show you if I change this to a hundred and let's change reduce this to 0 0.01 uh, you can see it's straying from the center it's not staying exactly centered it's moving around a little bit so when I do the vertex uh, in addition to the width divided by 2 plus the X times the zoom now I have this offset X and an offset Y. And the offset X and Y are being calculated here from Perlin noise, which is a type of randomness. Um, it's kind of hard to explain what Perlin noise is, but it's sort of smooth randomness. It's the easiest explanation I can give. If you want gradual randomness, then you want something like 0 0.001. If you want randomness that changes more quickly, then you want this to be pretty small, and now it's going to jump around a lot more. And if you don't want it to stray from the center, just put this to zero. So you could also uh, play this on your phone, you can see, 
And when you're playing it on your phone, you can pause it by just tapping like that. So there'll be a link uh, so that you could view it on your phone if you want. It is sort of possible to edit this on your phone if you open the P5JS website, uh, but it's really hard to use. Uh, and there's no app, unfortunately, for editing this, but you can run it from your phone and you can do file, share, present, and then we get, you can get something like that. Oh dear, <laughs> low battery mode. It's messing with my green screen. <laughs> anyway, lots of links in the description. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.